Hey guys, it's May May, and today in my Entrepreneur Showcase, you're going to meet someone I think is incredible and has done incredible things using products we love. I cannot wait for you to hear what Troy has done. I want you to meet Troy Young, and um, I'll tell you how I met Troy. It was through his YouTube channel, TroyTube, yep. where Troy taught me more Inkscape than anybody in the world. <laughs> so Troy, take just a second to give us, I think the first thing people are going to want to know is who you are, what your business is, and all the ways they can reach you, your websites, your YouTubes, and all sure. that, and then we'll chat. Sure, okay. sure. So um, I live in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, my wife and I uh, st started crafting almost by accident about five years, five and a half years ago. Uh, although we both had that in our background. You know, my mother was a seamstress. Her mother owned a hobby store, floral shop growing up, and things like that. And um, you know, we uh, uh, started down this path and stumbled into what we love to do. And uh, as part of that, I started my YouTube channel, TroyTube. Uh, so that's really easy to find. And then uh, 651vinyl.com uh, came sometime later as a vendor for initially vinyl and heat transfer products. Uh, and it has expanded into many more craft products beyond that. And, uh, and so, uh, between that, my website, which is TroyYoung.com, I'm really easy to find. <laughs> it's super easy to find online. That's a good tip for later, right? We'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but just just glad to be here and uh, uh, happy to to talk about our business. So, Troy, the last time we talked, um, and I don't mind people knowing this, I'm going to be when we can open our doors again. We are going to be mm -hmm. offering some of Troy's products in our store, um, and we hope that'll be sometime in July. By the way, we haven't talked about that, but um, when we were talking last time, you made a statement. Well, let me back up. You and I went to a conference together. We were at the uh -huh. same conference. And at the time, I think you had 10 employees. Were you at that point? That was about, yeah, about 10 employees. That was what, August of 17, 2017? Good. I don't remember. Yeah. Probably about that long ago. Yeah. And I was starstruck. I need to tell you this because literally when I started cricket and started learning um, Inkscape and all that, every video you put out, I was watching. And so when they <laughs> told me you were going to be there, honestly, they called me and asked me to be there and they told me you, and I'm like, I'm in. Yeah. So we got to meet, we didn't get to spend any time together at the, yeah. at the event, but you made the comment to me on the phone this last time we had a conversation, your wife bought a cricket and it turned everything around. So I want people to hear that story. If you don't mind sharing it. Yeah, absolutely. So I worked in IT for about 25 years at all different levels. You know, I started out like anyone else working on computers and worked my way up. And I worked at Fort Knox for a year for the DOD as a contractor. Uh, you know, I owned my own business for 10 years. We did accounting systems and electronic health record systems. Uh, spent a lot of time in your neck of the woods over across the border in Georgia uh, with the software company that I work with. And, uh, you know, that was, I, I, as things evolved throughout my career, I decided that you, you reach a point of burnout where you no longer like doing what you're doing. You realize that you were learning the entire time. So it was fun, but then it becomes a point where it becomes work and no more fun. And chasing the work, the recession hit, a lot of consulting went away. Uh, and and a, in early 2015, well, actually January 2015, I was out of work for a period of time and Tammy had been crafting. She was actually on disability at the time because she suffers from chronic migraines. And, you know, she's an attorney. I mean, she's super smart. We grew up and went to high school together. She didn't know me in high school because she, she was in all the smart classes and I wasn't. <laughs> and um, we met up a little bit later in life and, and got married. And uh, that little period of time when I was out of work, she decided she wanted a Cricut. And she said, she tells me one day we're driving down the road and I'm, I'm going to buy this machine called a Cricut. And she was feeling me out is what she was doing because she, she knows, she knows me better than anybody else. And, and so I, the only thing I could picture was like 15 years ago, these commercials that were on TV of this little teenage girl cranking this thing. <laughs> that was the only thing I knew about Cricut. And I was, and I said, I don't want anything to do with it. You know? And she talks about it for a couple of weeks and kind of breaks me over. And I said, okay, I'll, we'll go get it. And I had to, it was in January. So they were sold out everywhere. The, the Explorer had just written release like six months earlier. And so I had to drive two hours up into Indiana to find one at a Menards. 
I bought it, brought it home. And in like 15 minutes, I cut out these super little intricate cardstock things. And I was like, this is incredible. When I sent her a text, I was like, this, she wasn't even home when I was hooking it up. And I said, this is incredible. Well, then that was a Saturday. Well, Sunday, I got so frustrated with it. I put it in the box and literally put it on her desk and said, I don't ever want to see this again. So Monday comes, Monday morning, I'm still out of work, you understand? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I can't let this thing beat me. So I go get it, I hook it back up, and it was on my desk for two years after that. And so for about four or five months, she and I paid our bills by selling crafts. So this was before Facebook even had Facebook Marketplace. You just had yard sale groups. And so she was out uh, keeping the roads hot, delivering things and taking orders 14 hours a day. I was in the basement 14 hours a day making things, uh, Easter buckets, all these kind of things. And it kept us out of bankruptcy. We, we just kept going there. You know, it's like bankruptcy wasn't a term we ever said during that whole period. And during that time, I started my YouTube channel. Uh, I started to recognize, uh, you know, the big cricket group only had 17,000 people in it when I joined and it's over 300,000 now. Right. And I, I recognized the need for some, someone to do videos uh, with Inkscape. Uh, so I did a couple videos. I think my first ones I did was on Photoshop and a couple simple things. And Dewana Roll messaged me and said, hey, she said, I'm the admin of the group. She said, we need more people doing videos like this. And she was very encouraging. And I've gotten to be a good friend with, with her through Facebook and met her a couple of times and, and over the years. And um, that April, uh, Cricket had a bad release of their software. And they, it couldn't be installed on Windows 8. And with my background, somebody messaged me and said, hey, I need some help. Could you help me out? And I figured out what was wrong with it before Cricket did. Mm -hmm. So I contacted them. They asked me to do a video on the workaround until they could fix it. And my channel took off. I became, suddenly became very popular. <laughs> right. And uh, I took a job a few months later back in IT. Uh, I kind of hated it for eight or nine months. Uh, I think in February, late February, the following year in 2016, uh, I get a message from someone who was here at local in Louisville, just, you know, someone in business and said, well, let's go have coffee. And I had told my wife, I said, I'm not sure why my employer keeps me because for what they have me doing, I, they could pay three people to do what I do. And uh, I said, if I was them, I would let me go. I'm a businessman. And I met uh, this gentleman had coffee with him in two weeks to the day. They let me go after that. And I sat around for about a day, you know, you're in shock a little bit, but I wasn't surprised necessarily. Right. You know, I'm just out of work again, trying to figure out what to be when I grow up at 46 years old. <laughs> That's so me. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I called Mike and I said, let's get together and talk. And he was doing e-commerce web development. And I have a programming background. You know, I've done all kinds of things in, in IT. And we got together and I said, if we're not doing something in six months, we'll shake hands and part ways. And four months later, we bought some inventory um, that all fit in, in a room that was half the size of my office right now. And it took off. Um, and we... You know, within less than a year, we had to move from a 2,500 square foot warehouse, which is where we were when we first met. Mm -hmm. uh, about a month and a half after we, you and I met in Alabama, um, in Mobile, uh, we moved into a 22,000 square foot warehouse. And we didn't think we would use it, use like half of it within two years. And it was full in a year. And it, 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 just, it just exploded. And I, I started to say, you know, about at about the one year mark, I, because of the growth I was seeing, and I had been in so many different industries over the years, I said, we have to be one of the fastest growing companies in our area. Uh, it, and just kept saying that. And then people kept messaging me and, and saying, I, and I've probably, people probably said hundreds of times to me, you could be the Amazon of crafting because we ship fast, we have good customer service and everything. And that's how we, we build our business. And after so many people say it, you start to believe it. Right. And, and you're like, well, maybe there's something, so many different people from all walks of life and all areas have said this. Maybe it's, that's true. So we have just continued to grow. And I mean, our, our growth rate has just been phenomenal. And, you know, I, I, the only thing I can attribute it to is a being in the right place at the right time and being lucky. B 
hard work. I mean, the, the hours never end, you know, I, and I love what I do. I get out of bed every day, come to work. I love working. It's part of my life. And somebody asked me last fall about the work life balance because they had experienced similar trends in their growth of their business. And I said, you know, I said, I don't necessarily consider those as having to be balanced on a scale where they're equal because if I am so much happier at what I do at work and my, as long as my family gets enough time and, and quality time and everything, I don't need to spend exactly the same amount of time with one or the other. It's, it's wherever life puts me the happiest. And so now we've reached a point where we have uh, three facilities here in Louisville, a total of about 85,000 square feet of warehouse space, uh, all within about a mile of each other. There's, it's warehouses are tough here right now because the, when we when we rented our first location here um, in late 2017, there was where there were warehouses everywhere. They were empty at the time. We we could have had a 130,000 square foot warehouse that was a distribution center. And now it's like 98, 99% full because of the change in the economy. So that's, that's been a little bit of a challenge, but, um, and, and I think that this year we're probably a shoe in to be named the fastest growing company in our region. And it's, it's, unless somebody comes out of nowhere, it's, it's by a mile too. So let's back up for a second. I want to ask you this question. So when you met with, his name was Mike, did you say? Mike. Mike. Yeah. When you met with Mike, did you have a direction? Did you go, here's what we're going to do? We did not. Uh, it was a meeting to have coffee and talk about maybe doing some work together because uh, we just he just saw that I was local. He thought I was interesting. He saw, thought he saw some of my videos. He had watched several of my videos and watched my progression in video quality because mm -hmm. you know as well as I do, your first few videos are horrible. You don't ever want to tell anybody your first video. Don't go right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you eventually you, your goal was to get to where you can turn those videos off. That's right. And, That's exactly yeah. right. And so he, he watched the progression of the, the video quality, my shooting angles, the content. You know, of course, I was learning as I was going. I was watching other YouTubers. I was watching you. I was watching Ken Hess. And I was telling Ken a few months ago, I said, ironically, he, Ken was introducing me to somebody else. I said, ironically, ironically, Ken was the first video I ever watched on a cricket. Really? And, yeah. That's cool. And, and now it's like, you know, we're all being one big happy family. Right. It uh, is. To, to get there. And it, it's, it's, it's really humbling uh, to a degree. It's really different for the people and, and, you know, knowing you and, and, and knowing Ken and other people in, in the, in this circle of, of YouTubers and social media people that the perception sometimes I think is that we're celebrities. Oh yeah. But, but we're just people. We're just folks. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll tell you that, that the trip to Mobile was really, a, it was a big turning point for me because I went down there with the intention of teaching my classes and sleeping in between classes because I was so exhausted from our the growth of our business. Well, you didn't do that. No, I was on the floor like eighteen hours a day, you and I love have it. a conversation like right, it was like shoo, shoo, shoo. yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was wonderful, but yeah, we didn't have a real direction when we met and talked initially. It was just kind of like you know, let's get to know each other and and see if there's something we can do. So for me in my business, there came a time when I went, it's almost more important for me to try it than for me not. You know, you talked about how miserable you were and this sort of thing at work. I was in the same boat. What was that point for you when you went, I have to give this a go or else? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think a couple of days after um, I lost my job and I called Mike, I went and met with him. And we talked about uh, what we could do together. And we we hadn't even planned on starting 651 Vinyl at that point either. That came later. We were actually just working together doing e-commerce web development. And I was doing programming. And so it took some time to come up with the idea of exactly what we were going to do. Yeah. And I still remember we were we, we were in this little office building. We, were, we had a two-room office. We had about four or five people that worked with us. And we, there was a patio there. And we would go out there and take our breaks and sit and talk. And, you know, Mike's a smoker, so he likes to go out and take his smoke breaks. And we would all just go out there and just, it was just a peaceful area. It was a brick patio with a creek right beside it, you know, just a great, it's like, I, I told him, I said, one of our goals should be to get back to where we can just buy that building and that can be our corporate headquarters. That would be awesome. That would be cool. <laughs> and, and that was the, you know, we had a conversation about what possibilities there were 
uh, you know, my channel, when we met just a few days before I met him for coffee, we, my channel hit 10,000 subscribers. So, you know, how big that moment is, you know, uh, when you hit the five digit subscriber level, level, and, and uh, we were just out there talking and, and just, it just evolved uh, it just, just through conversation and, and, you know, getting to know each other and knowing how we fit together. So real talk, how scary was it to take the jump? <laughs> You know, it's, it's, for me, it wasn't as scary as it would be for some people because at that point you have not, it's kind of like you have nothing to lose. Uh, you know, I was unemployed, I had to decide what I was going to, like I said, what I was going to be when I grew up, you know, trying to figure out, do I continue down this path of working in IT? And, and for probably 20 years or so before that, I mean, just a few years into that industry, I started to question myself and say, would I be better doing something else and using my skills and knowledge to run a business versus doing IT consulting or IT work and apply that knowledge and skill set to a business in a different way. And I felt that way for many years. Uh, and at one point, I kind of had that. It was an IT company. So yeah. I was still doing the work. Yeah. Uh, so I never really broke away from that. But when we were doing accounting systems, we, we worked in so many different business lines. Uh, we had customers that did, made needlepoint thread from raw cotton thread to packaging it and dyeing it and braiding it and everything. We had companies that made aluminum beds for coal trucks from raw material, aluminum sheets, things like that. So I'd seen so many different business lines and I knew that I had what it would take to run a different type of business by, by having that exposure. And Mike was similar. He had worked, done cabling and, and e-commerce and a different bunch of different things, kind of in IT, but not directly what I was doing. And so that's why we complement each other so well is, is that we've both seen so many different experiences that come together and, and work well together. So when you decided, because we haven't really talked about your product line, mm -hmm. because you might want to touch on that because I'm no expert with your product line. Mm -hmm. um, but what made you, when did you go, that's it, this is the line, this is going to work? You know, when I was, I remember in when my ch YouTube channels took off and got popular really quick. I mean, within a probably a, a 30 or 60 day period, I had a couple thousand subscribers and I had tons of attention and, and traffic. Two things happened. One, it, it reinstilled my confidence that I still had it mm -hmm. from the IT perspective. And, you know, for so long, I was like, I just don't know if I can do this anymore. And you lose confidence and everything. And then all of a sudden I had thousands of people I had their attention. And it was helping them, which I enjoy doing. That's part of what's built our business. I love helping people. And um, that reinstilled that confidence in me. Uh, the second part of that was as I started working with materials, I started to realize there was so much. And my, my background is electronic engineering. That's what my degree's in. And I started taking apart radios when I was 10 years old. You know, I was that kid that tore apart his stereo to see what was inside. And I started to realize that working with these materials, there was a ton of technical information involved with how the adhesive worked, mm -hmm. uh, how the application processes, the techniques. And I actually feel like there's more for me to learn that I enjoy better right. in crafting than there was in IT because crafting fits into art and, the, and it's, I'm what I call a semi-creative person. It takes me a while sometimes to create something I like mm -hmm. where, you know, a true artist, it just flows out of their right. hands. Um, but it's, it's enjoyable. It's relaxing. You get to see something that's totally different every time you make something, you know, it's not it's like crazy. you make. You, um, is this a fair statement? You started still learning. Like oh, absolutely. And I'm still learning today. Uh, it, I mean, it, there isn't a day when I first went into IT, I, I loved it because there wasn't a thing that a day that went by that I didn't learn like five or 10 new things. And you know, eventually, like I said, the burnout hits. And then when I have come into this industry, the sky's the limit when it comes to learning. I mean, there is no end to it. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times we talk about, uh, we just had a conversation yesterday about adding a product to our website that's a new product and everyone's like, well, what category do we put it in? Because it doesn't really fit anything else. And I said, well, what's it next to when you go to a big box store? Hmm. You know, what aisle is it in? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and so there's so much uh, more information out there. I, I feel that I can learn from everyone else. You know, my, one of my favorite sayings is that if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to find another room. Amen. I agree that 100 percent. And, you know, just being associated with CEOs of billion dollar companies who want our business and getting to know them and everything, that's that's been my other room uh, for the last couple of years is, is getting to, to know these people who are much more successful than I am. And they have an appreciation for what we've done. OK, so here's my cliche question that mm-hmm. it's a good question. OK. Yeah. What's the thing you tell someone like do you have one piece of business advice, the one that's most important that you wish you would have done or what have you? What's the one piece you give somebody? Because here's who I'm hoping to reach. Let me say this. I'm hoping to reach the person that talks to me and says, yeah, but you had this and you had that. No, I, I'm just like you. I didn't know what I was going to be when I grew up. And I had been in the business that I was in forever. And that person is sitting there today. And this came to me because of this time we're in where mm-hmm. people are not at work anymore. And look, You've got an opportunity to take your computer and turn it into a business, you know, and right. that's who I want to speak to. So that person that's out there today going, yeah, but Troy had this and Troy had that. What's the thing you'd say to them that supersedes all of that, that you need to always do first? You know, and, and after what I've been through, I, I think about this a lot, actually. Uh, so I don't think it's so much of a cliche question because Good. it is something that's on my mind a lot. And that is looking back. Now, I mentioned earlier that probably 25 years into my IT career, I started to question if I should have been doing that or not, or if I should have been running a business using my other skills. And because I was young, I was, you know, 30 years old uh, or young, you know, my late 20s. And I was was it confident enough to do something like that. And I started my first business when I was 31. And it was part of that was out of a lot of encouragement from a, a relative along with a business I was working for that was probably going to go out of business. And I had an opportunity uh, and and saw it and I made that jump. And so my advice would be, if you question what you're doing at all, you should be looking at what, you know, doing something else you're going to enjoy. My, uh, yeah, I even look back on when I was young. I've always said that, you know, I would probably retire in Florida someday or you know, somewhere south, you know, below the snow belt <laughs> is the goal. And it, and it, it's funny because Tammy and I were almost counting the days for the kids to get out of high school so we could hit the road. And we joked and told them they better have a forwarding address after they graduate and everything. Well, now we're kind of trapped. We have a big business here. And we, You're we not going really to leave. Uh, and, I, and I wouldn't have it any other way uh, either now that we're here. But um, when I was young, I probably, looking back, I should have picked up and moved south somewhere when I was young and just done it. You know, uh, you have to lose the fear. You have to do it. There is no matter what you do. You, I, I always I told my business partner that no matter what decisions we make, it's not going to ruin us as people because we are who we are. And if we made, you know, now it changes a little bit over time because now my decisions affect 120 employees and their families. So that that does factor into it a little bit. But when it comes to making decisions and bold moves and, you know, and we're, and we're making some of those moves now because everything changed in the past 60 days. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I just really feel like people need to, to do it. And, and a little quick story I'll tell you about my son. My son has a very popular YouTube channel now. He's 26 years old. What is it? I don't a, know it. it it's Tyler Tube, ironically. <laughs> T-Y-L-E-R? Yeah. And he, he does kind of uh, almost like redneck backyard scientist type mm. stuff. And, and he's got this crazy, you know, his, most of his audience are young. They're probably like 12 to 22 years old or something like that. And he has almost a half million subscribers. Wow. And, yeah. And a year ago, a little bit over a year ago, I, he did a video. It was a Q&A video. And uh, he, someone, he was doing rapid fire answers to you know, his viewers. And it was about a 15 or 20 minute video. And the last question he spent about five minutes on was, when did you become deci- decide to become a YouTuber? He was a, he's a diesel mechanic and still is. He still has his job, <laughs> even after all this. And I, I, he, he answered that question very, um, he was very articulate and talked about how when he started doing that, he um, loved it because he was learning every day. And it was, uh, it was so much like when I went into the IT world Mm -hmm. and he said, now they bring me a truck. They tell me what's wrong with it. 
I fix it and I go home at the end of the day. And he said, there's nothing rewarding in it whatsoever. And I listened to him talk about how much he hates his job. Yeah. And I never thought that I would send my kid a text at midnight and say, quit your job now. See? I mean, and, and that was, that's powerful to say you said that to your kid. And uh, he, he responded with an incredibly responsible uh, answer. And that is that I want to pay off my student loans in my truck first. <laughs> you know, I quit. So I'm like, dang it. I taught him to be too responsible. <laughs> I have, and, and, I have a bunch of those too. It's funny that you would say that because I'm the same person. You know, you change when you realize what you love. Right, and right. you realize how long you held yourself back. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. And and now, you know, the, the, our life has changed in the last couple of years to a degree. Um, you know, Tammy and I bought a new house and moved last fall. And, you know, I worried about things like, I, I, I told her when we were looking for houses, I said, I don't want to buy a big house. And she and, and I, I said, I don't want an employee to say, have you seen the house they live in? Mm-hmm. You know, I, that's just not who we are. And um, it, it's just like I said, it's just all very humbling to be where we are today. OK, then I have one last question uh-huh. and then we're going to we're going to um, make sure people know how to find you. Sure. OK. I am always interested to hear how people how people feel about the statement. Um. Find what you do or do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. So is that how you say that statement? It's pretty close. Yes. So how do you, I know how I react to that statement. How do you react to that statement? Uh, I react to that statement by saying that I get out of bed every day and love to come to work. And after I work eight or 10 hours, I go home and I usually work at least three or four more hours and I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, now, I get beat up a little bit over it at home because I spend too much time in the basement of my office. <laughs> uh, and, and sometimes it's it can be probably the hardest thing about loving what you do so much is realizing when you need to back off a little bit because there has been a couple of instances where I find myself wanting to relax and I can't. And I've been there. Yeah, you, you get exhausted you start to get stressed because you have so much to do. You're thinking about, yeah, yeah. I'll start to think about things, not that, that they're a deadline, but just that I'm putting a priority on them in my head and making them more important than they are. And so then I start to get stressed about that and unable to relax. Right. And there's been a couple instances where I've literally had to force myself to sit on the sofa and watch a movie. Yeah. I, I've been there. Like I, I'll find myself, feeling guilty because I'm saying to myself, you don't have to work. You can have fun. Like I feel like, Oh, but I do need to work, but I don't have to work. I can have fun. I can relax a little bit. So right. I know what you're saying there. Right. And, and I had someone who texted me the other day. I, I have this texting app where I engage with our audience and they texted me about how they were uh, struggling because of everything going on right now. And they were just depressed and things and, and couldn't, do anything creative. And I told them, I said, I get that point all the time. It's almost like writer's block. It's a creative block where you just don't know what to do. And so when I get there, I will force myself just to sit down and do something. Even Mm -hmm. if it's something I don't want to do right then, I'll force myself to do something or make a craft or something. And it within five, 10 minutes, it breaks me out of that cycle and I'm able to, to get back on track. Yep. Well, I love what you do. I'm very impressed. As a matter of fact, I'll say, um, when we talked to you, when Shannon and I were talking to you, right after that, I went, I'm so impressed with my friends. Like, I'm so impressed with what they have done. And I know how much work we put into it. Because I have yeah. to know who I talk to at two and three in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, you know exactly. I'm, it doesn't mean that I work 24-7. But when, you're, when your hobby becomes your work, it's not work anymore. That's what that statement means. I work more than I've ever worked. But I love right. what I do. And you and you said it over and over again. I love what I do. It doesn't mean you love it more than your family. It doesn't mean you love it more than your home. It doesn't mean you love it more than your responsibilities. But you love it. So you do it. And you lean. Exactly. It. So, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about this real quick. You offer in your online store vinyl of all different kinds. Tell us what your product line is. Yeah, so so the the business started. The two primary products were adhesive vinyl and heat transfer vinyl. So adhesive vinyl being 
cups, decals, signage, things like that. And then heat transfer vinyl, of course, for apparel. And it has expanded in each direction from that. So we, we carry uh, the StarCraft products, Caesar products, uh, Oracle products, uh, it, and Cricut. And then we, so then we, about a year and a half ago, we started to expand in both directions is what I say. They, our core business is vinyl and heat transfer vinyl. So now we sell the Cricut machines, the Silhouette machines, all the accessories that goes with those. And then on the other side, we also sell blanks now. So we're set, we sell your, your can coolers, your acrylic blanks, uh, you know, all of those things that you, when you have vinyl and heat transfer vinyl, you need a machine to cut it mm-hmm. and you need things to put it on. Mm-hmm. And so we we have expanded both of those lines, and now we're starting to to work towards expanding out into a, a lot more craft products uh, beyond that. So we've added glitter, epoxy. Uh, we're looking now at, at adding probably some paints and other uh, products that that expand out. Uh, you know, our our goal is is kind of to become an online big box store for crafting. I hope you can do it. We need look. And people probably think, yeah, but he'll be your competition. No, he won't. Because your passion is your passion. My passion is my passion. And I've said this before, regardless how you feel about it. What God has for me is for me. What God has for you is for you. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah. I hope you can do that because I think, number one, we need more resources. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially today. Online ordering is, is important today. It's very and, important. And, and I don't, you know, I'm, I try to be friendly with every competitor, what people say competitor out there. Exactly. I don't I said, right. perceive it. Yeah. You know, there's, there's enough food out there for everyone to eat. And if I'm traveling, if I'm in a town and I see one of my, if I know that one of our so-called competitors is there, I'll try to stop in and say hi and just talk to them and get to know them. Uh, you know, some of them may be a little skeptical and maybe think I'm going to do some recon or something, but you know, I just, I, we do our own thing. I don't copy anyone else. I don't go, you know, uh, I don't uh, try to, to steal anybody else's secrets or anything like that. We do what works for us and whatever works, we do more of it. I, you know, the funny thing is always. I'm a hundred percent that same person. And a lot of people don't realize that I'm going to ask you, I keep saying this the last thing, but you know, we could talk all day. Um, oh yeah. Do you find that you answer your audience needs more than, hey, they're carrying this and they're carrying this, so we have to. I listen to my audience. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I have this unique, I don't know if it's a gift or a curse, but I have this ability to watch and and keep mental ticks of trends. You know, I recognize how often people ask certain questions or products that they're looking for. And then we also have, and then the other side of that is we have this, um, or I have always had this desire for quality products. Uh, and, and maybe that comes from my engineering background, you know, where you tend to, you know, the old saying is you never enough time to do it right the first time, but always enough time to do it over. And I look at our product lines that way, where we only put things out that are quality products that have been evaluated and tested and worked with and already uh, that we already know what we're doing when we launch them. And we had a conversation just the other day about all the new products we're going to be looking at over the next few months. And one of the goals is to make sure that our customer service has a resource to refer to and understand those products because our customer service is not just someone who answers the phone and takes a complaint about an order or something like that. They answer questions about the products. They're all crafters. So that that's super important to us. That's ours too. Our customer service has learned it. You know what I'm saying? They know it. If they don't know it, they find the answer for the customer. Um, Right. Right. Troy, I have really enjoyed this. I hope today somebody watches you and goes, I feel just like you and I'm ready. I'm going to do this. It may not be in the craft world. It could be in anything that they feel passionate about, but I just wanted people to hear what my friends are doing and how, because people always say to me, how did you do this? How did you do this? Well, my story is my story, but to be able to hear your story and, and hopefully in the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing more of these with more people to show how you just take the leap. You have to take the leap. You'll never know if you don't leap. Right. Right. And I, and I think at the end of the day, when you finish up these different talks with different entrepreneurs and businesses, I think you'll probably hear the same thing a lot. And that is uh, about the right time at the right time, you know, right place, at the right time, uh, a lot of luck and a lot of hard work because, yeah. you know, when, when I met you in, in Mobile in 2017, 
I was doing, I came in at six o'clock every morning. I pulled down all the product and put it out to be cut and rolled for orders. I did all the ordering. I did all the accounting. I did all the customer service. I did all the marketing. I built our website. I did, took pictures of the product and I shipped the packages. <laughs> And so they, 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 those days were 15, 16, 18 hour days every day for months at a time. And the, the amount of time it takes to build something is overwhelming. But again, when you love it, your days fly by. Yeah, I thought I had really done something because when I met you, I had one employee. <laughs> well, you had done something. You, you had, oh, hey, yeah. I have an assistant. Like I had an right. assistant. Bonafide assistant. And now my husband was packing, shipping, ordering inventory. He did everything that I didn't do. And she did customer service and kept Mm -hmm. my calendar. And how we were doing it, I don't, I mean, I could see how we did it then. We all worked a lot of hours, including my assistant. She didn't get off the clock and go home. She went home and worked again. And so, you know, it it's not, I don't want anybody to think you can I don't think you can be passionate about something in eight hours. A, I don't know. I don't know if that's a fair, th- fair way to say it. I couldn't do it in eight hours a day. No way. No way. So that's where we are. I'm not, I'm not worn from it. I'm not worn out. I love it. You know, I don't feel like I've, I don't feel like I wasted any time. No, no. Uh, you know, the, the past 60 days has probably been the most challenging time of our business as everybody else. And part of that is the, shift of, uh, you know, when we first closed on March 26th, there was a couple of week period where uh, we were still meeting with our management and planning out what we needed to do and everything. Well, then the two weeks after that was the toughest time for me. I was bouncing off the walls. I was just going crazy. It's a, an environmental change without changing your environment. It was like all of a sudden there was a nuclear bomb that hit and everybody was gone but me. You know, and and it was just there's no noise, there's nothing happening, and that was a very difficult time to get past. That was the the most difficult time I've had in the past four years of, of you know since I met my business partner of trying to get past and and you know we were I was just emailing with a, a, a someone this morning and telling him that the first of this year I had rolled out a huge marketing plan. And it was well underway. It was working marvelously. It was, I mean, my whiteboard was filled with marketing plans and what I was going to do. And then all of a sudden it came to a screeching halt. Everything changed. I'm still working on it, but not like I was. And now it has forced me to shift to an operational plan of what we're going to do for the next six months. And it is just an, it's an entirely different world now. Same with us. We, we went from, the everyday, what we did, everything was working. I'm a person who, um, I don't know if it, nobody's probably like this, but I bring on a new thing and I make sure it works and it's, and all the kinks are out of it before we bring on another thing. Like we don't, I don't bring on mm-hmm. many things at once. I can't do it. And when all this happened, we were rocking right along and we were bringing on one thing at a time and then boom. And it was like, okay, now we have to do a whole other thing just to be right. able to keep our employees. And so right. we started changing the way and it's, and it's different, but you know, again, I have learned from it. I'm not sad about it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what I learned. I learned a whole new avenue of product that we didn't even know we could actually, you know, physically make happen. And so it made me, it just made me shift focus. Right. But that's yeah. good. It's good. We need those challenges because we can't, because I've been in the place where I've stopped learning and that's bad. I've been to the place where I'm like, Oh, I know it now. No, you don't. You got to keep, honing your skills, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you for doing this with me being my first interview. I'm super excited. I'm still yeah, I was I'm so still happy remember, to do this. I still remember learning how to put curve, put text on a curve from you and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I love all you've done for, for the crafting community, not only from, I mean, your videos are still there. So if you're, if you're still learning those yeah. videos, go to Troy tube. And subscribe. Be sure to subscribe to his channel too. So, yeah, Troy Tube, and uh, you know, of course, our website six fifty one vinyl dot com, and then my personal site, my blog site, more or less of TroyYoung dot com. And so, like I said, I'm pretty easy guy to find online and uh, easy to contact. I try to be there for customers and, and interact as much as we can. You know, and I, I think that that goes a long ways when it comes to customers because I think people over the last twenty years have changed how they buy because they've 
started to order online and especially now everybody's ordering online even more this year than they ever were. And, but they don't change who, the, why, who they buy from because, mm-hmm. um, you know, it goes back to the Walmart days. I think when you could walk into any Walmart in any given time, Sam Walton would be there to greet people. And that was one of the things people loved. And I've just, I've always felt that way that when you have customers, you, you treat them like humans, not like they're just customer, their ants right. walking through your store or something. I mean, people, these are people and, and, right. and they like to have that interaction and, and it's worked well for us and, and we plan to keep doing it. Well, we're going to put all your links in the description below. So they'll be able to just right. in the description and find you all over the place. And um, I just, I wish you continued success and, I know you're, who knows, one day I'm going to look back and go, yep, I interviewed him way back when. <laughs> he's as big as Amazon, when probably he's doing my fulfillment. <laughs> or I'll be looking back going, wow, she interviewed me one day. She's, she's stupid let's, low enough to interview me one day. <laughs> let's hope that happens. Let's hope. Well, Troy, thanks so much. I hope you have a great day. I'm excited for you today. I hope you have a good day. And uh, we will be talking to you again real soon. Thank you. Appreciate thanks, it. Troy. All right. Bye-bye. Sounds good.